Morning, good morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you and praise you for this time, the season that we're in. Father God, we know we're living in perilous time according to the book of Timothy. Hallelujah, dangers is everywhere, anywhere. Hallelujah, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to cover us, cover our families, cover our cars on the highways, cover us on the job, cover the children in the schools, cover us in the byways and the highways, cover our friends, and Lord, even bless our enemies. And today, Lord, we got a word. Hallelujah, just a word out your, out your Bible, Matthew 7. It talks about Jesus is, is ministering. The first thing he says in chapter 7 is judge not that you not be judged. For what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. The way you condemn people and what measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you. However you treat your neighbor, hallelujah, whoever your neighbor is, however you treat them. It ain't got to be your neighbor in your neighborhood, on your job, in the, in the on the highways, hallelujah, in the schools, wherever you are. Hallelujah, however you treat them, God is watching and angels are watching. The same thing will come back to you if you judge good and take care of people. It's going to come back to you good. But if you treat people like trash, that's what it's going to come back trash to you. And, and, and listen to this. And why behold it? The moat that's in our brother's eye. You're looking at all the bad things on social media or all in your family. Uh, at the people around you, hallelujah, the thing they going through, their trouble, but you forgetting the stuff that you got in your own house. I think one good uh, songwriter said, sweep around your own porch. It said, why well, behold the moat that's in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that's in their own eye, your own trash. Or how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thy own eye. And behold, a, a beam is in your own eye. Hallelujah. Fix this thing in yourself before you start trying to help somebody else. And it's called your uh, thou hypocrite first eye. It say first cast out the beam out of thy own eye. Then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat of thy brother's eye. You can help your brother. Hallelujah. It ain't got to be your natural brother, but you got to fix yourself. If you're an alcoholic, don't be trying to judge somebody as an alcoholic. Or you're a crackhead. You know you're doing drugs under the table. You could be uh, strung out on pre prescription drugs. Don't call somebody a, a crackhead or a drug addict and you know you got your own problem get your own problem then you can be a testimony to your brother it's like me i'm a former addict i haven't done drugs since 1992 i can help somebody but i got i can't come at them hallelujah in a bad way at least considering i fall myself back into crack cocaine hallelujah be careful with people it said those that are uh, spiritual you can restore but if you're not spiritual and you're always throwing rocks at people you can't help nobody it say give not which is holy unto the dogs oh lord that's self-explanatory what's holy that's the word of god anything that's good hallelujah that's godly don't give it to a dog that's like me taking a, a nice steak that I just fried on the stove and me laying it on the floor for a dog or a pearl. Let's say you got nice jewelry. You know what I'm saying? It's just a metaphor. Hallelujah. You throw it out into a pig pen or, or throw it on the ground or give it to a baby. You know what they're going to do? they just going to tear the pieces. Listen, it say, Give not which is holy unto the dog, neither cast your pearls before swine. That's right. Uh, taking God's word and wasting it and arguing with somebody who don't believe. Don't waste your time. You know what I'm saying? It say, after first and second admonition, move on. Why argue with somebody all day and all night about something you know that's right? At least they're going to trample you on your feet and turn again, then rend you. You know what that means? They're going to turn again, they're going to kick you, and they're going to turn around and rend you. That means stab you in some type of way. It could be, it ain't got to be natural. It could be uh, uh, with a word, spiritually. They're going to tear you to pieces. And God said, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. 
You do this in faith for everyone that acts of the Holy Spirit, acts of the Father, acts of the Lord Jesus. He'll open it to you. He said in the book of James, do not pray amiss. Don't be asking God for you to win no lottery. That's what, it, that's what it's saying. Ask God for work and he'll give you, bless you with a job. It might not be something that you want, but it'd be enough to provide for you and your family. He said, if you ask, you know, and you'll receive, seek it and you'll find to him that knock and shall be open. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the light. He is the door. Hallelujah. He said, what man is there of you whom the, the son asks bread? And you give him a stone. If you if you if somebody in your house is thirsty, are you gonna give them a cup of water? Or are you just gonna say, hey, you're gonna you'll be alright, I'll pray for you. Or you give them uh, 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 something that can't quench their thirst. That, that can be uh, uh you know in, in different ways. That could be a, a word, it's like your neighbor, you see them struggling moving a um a washing machine in the house. But you say, hey, I'll pray for you. Are you going to go over there and actually help him push that thing up in the house? Come on now. And Jesus said, if he asks a fish, we give him a serpent. That's serious right there. You're going to feed him with a word or encouragement or with money or whatever you can do. Or you going to, uh, a serpent is something that could, that could kill him. They say, if ye that being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more should your, your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever you should would that man should do to you, do even to them, for this is the law of the prophets. Enter into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way to destruction many there be which go thereup or that because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few that find it this is Jesus talking about finding himself people finding him the word before Jesus came on scene the heavens was closed up Jesus is the way the truth and the light there's no other way to heaven but through the cross that's what he's saying no other way he said I'm the way the truth and the light you got all these different religions all these different doctrines Paul said if you preach any other doctrine you're lying the truth is not in you I know I heard uh, Ophel Winfrey talking about as many ways to heaven that's a lie it's only one way the narrow way is Jesus Christ through, through the word of God through faith, we have faith. We have a uh, we have a uh, faith. We have great. We get grace through faith. It's nothing we we got. We can earn. God give us the Holy Spirit. He give us faith. He give us grace. It's only one way through the cross. It say, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raven wolves. And we just see. One that's in the news that can't keep his hand away from other women outside of his marriage. But on Sunday, you preach good. But during the week, you're on social media and, and sending messages to women outside of your marriage. Like God can't see the fornication and the adul adultery. You're not even trying to get it delivered. You just live in any kind of way. But you, you you put on your suit, your sheep suit on Sunday, but during the week you're a wolf. And they say you shall know them by the by their fruits. You can see a wolf. Hallelujah. They can act like a sheep, but by their fruits, you can see them by their works. It's like if I'm telling you that I'm a man of God, but then you see me doing this and that and me treat my kids a certain way, my wife a certain way on my job, doing all these things. Hallelujah. I, ungodly. But I'm saying it with my mouth. That's why God said uh, he told the scribes and the Pharisees, you're close to me with your words. But your heart is far from me. It's a every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But 
A corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. I mean, it's plain and simple. It's talking about people. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is, is cut down. God cut it down and cast into hell. That's our lives. If our lives is not fruitful according to the book of God, I think it's John 15. He said, uh, <coughs> the father is the husband, man, and Jesus is the vine, and we are branches. But if we attach it to the vine, God will prune us that if you ever seen a, a fruit tree prune, <coughs> it will bear more fruit. And the fruit ain't talking about uh, apples and oranges. It's talking about our lives. It's fruitful in the kingdom of God. We are ambassadors to God. But if we're not <coughs> produce, producing anything good, just like uh, Jesus gave, uh, God gave this man all these different talents, and these people, they multiplied the talents, but one person took the talent and hid it, buried it in the earth. God was mad. He took the talent and gave somebody else. That person was unfruitful in the kingdom of God, ungodly, useless. So he's basically saying you're, if you're useless to God with your time frame that you have on the earth, whatever your assignment is on the earth, you need to try to do your assignment. Ask God to help you. That's what he was saying. If any man lack, ask God. Ask him, knock, seek, Lord, uh, help me. Be in the right direction with this time that I have on this earth. <clears throat> if not, God gonna, no matter how much money you got, what kind of job you got, if you're not being fruitful in the kingdom of God, God eventually is gonna get rid of you. Plain and simple. That's the word of God. You do it to yourself. God is not evil. <clears throat> the people that's in hell, they did it to themselves. The angels that's in hell. They didn't have a plan of uh, uh, redemption. Nobody died for them. But those angels, watch the angels. <coughs> God put them in the lowest part of the earth, Tartarus. What no plan of salvation. Then they created these monsters. Hallelujah. That's what we're dealing with now, these, these demons. They were disembodied spirit because he destroyed the angels, <coughs> children, the byproducts, roaming the earth and causing all kind of destruction. So they're going to be chained, if you read the book of Jude, until the white throne judgment. They don't have a second chance. As a man, we're made in God's image. You know we're weak. <clears throat> Going back to Adam and Eve, he gave us a chance. So you have to be fruitful in your life. Or you're useless to God. Well, then, you know, it, it talk about not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, should enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that do the will of my father, which is in heaven. That's all of it. I can lay hands, heal people, cast out demons, do all these good things. But if I don't have a true relationship with God, that's like you coming in my house. If you're a total stranger. Hallelujah to me, you're not coming through my door if I open, answer the door. I don't know you. Same thing with God in his house, spiritual house. You can do all these things in the name of Jesus. They did it in the Old Testament. They did it in the New. They did things in the name of Jesus. But if he don't have that personal relationship, I don't know you. Your name ain't written in the limb. Look in the book. Is his name in the book? Is her name in the book? I don't know you. Get thee behind me, say, I don't know you. He said, I don't know you. You got to have a personal relationship with God. You speak to God, talk to God, listen to what God telling you to do in your life. And then say, look, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in our name? In our name, have we cast out devil? And in our name, done many wonderful works. Then he said, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. It had, iniquity mean wickedness. It's like, if I had a good name, my name, my last name was uh, Washington or let's say Obama, people gonna recognize the name. So they might give me a leeway because of uh, my father's name. 
But that's just all it is. It's power in in the good name. But I'm not. I'm, I I don't know. I'm not connected. They just you. I just use my name to to open doors, get favor. But nobody really know know me. That's basically what it's saying. God don't know you. Who are you? You don't talk to me. You don't love me. I can do all things. Uh, uh, for people you can give that's what he said Paul Paul talked about it you can give all these things you can give millions of dollars to people for charity you can do all these different things you know in the sight of men and God still not recognize you you got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and if you don't have that relationship you got to try to build a relationship what father don't don't know his son or his daughter. What son don't have a personal relationship with his father? When I think about my father, I love my natural father. I love my natural mother. And I think they love me too. So it's, it got to be a real connection there. Yeah, we're going to fall. A father always going to try to help his son get up. Even though he chastised and correct. His son, you know, he's going to rebuke his son. But it has to be a real genuine relationship. And then the last thing, our house must be built on a good foundation. That's what I posted earlier. America, even though America had the slave Bible, which was only, I think, 200 uh, pages in it, something like that, versus a 66 book Bible with 1198 pages you know they took the Bible and trimmed it down and just used words to trick deceive the slaves the brainwash but God he he, he forbid men stealing but but for a good part America has been a nation to go to other nations to help other nations monetarily uh, through ministries spreading the gospel I'm not, and I'm not talking about the secret societies. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not getting into the secret society. But the heart of a lot of Americans, you go back to the Quakers and people like that, it's been ministries. And to love God and obey God. And America was a catalyst for the whole world spreading the gospel. But now America has gotten away from spreading the gospel. Hallelujah. And, and, and won't other nations... To legalize perverted marriage and, and, and legalize sodomy. I remember America when a certain black man that was president tried to convince Russia to change their laws. And they rejected it. A lot of African nations rejected it. And you know a lot of them in the Middle East reject that. That's directly against God. Your house is built on a wicked foundation. You, you changed the law. I remember a testimony where a lady said her mother was sad when they changed the law. Low of, of uh, what was that? Roe versus Wade. It was a dark day in American history where they legalized and let a, a, a mother legally kill their own child. Because she said her body is her body. But that's a whole separate body. According to the the book book of a uh, book of God, if you read the book of Psalms, it's talking about I knew you at the moment of conception. If you read Jeremiah chapter one, I knew you in your mother's womb. But you you started building your house on sink and sin. You took prayer out of school. You are doing all this wicked stuff. Let people choose their own sex. And God has already established man and woman, even in marriage. So that's all I got to say. Y'all have a blessed day.